Hi there, Grayson, Leah, Ryan, and Kim. I think I got everybody. <laughs> and all the grandparents, <laughs> all the cousins. Uh, this is Grayson's video lesson for today. Uh, there are five things I wanna talk about, some of them longer than others. Um, if you have any questions at the end or want me to look at anything, um, you're not bothering me by sending me a message. I don't mind at all. Um, I'd much rather have you ask me a 30 second question than be frustrated all week. Um, so I'll start the list and go and we'll work my way down. So first thing is our G-tonalization and posture. Um, so uh, so first thing is uh, G-tonalization. Let me play through real quick and we get my, my foot still out. Work. So what I want him to work on is first going through the scale. Um, it's good for us to warm up with scales. I usually, when I, when I start my practice day, um, that's the first thing I go to. It kind of helps me say hello to the instrument, get my fingers in, um, in playing condition, get the blood flowing, the muscles moving, um, that sort of thing. So I'll run through a few scales that I uh, work on. I kind of cycle through a bunch of them during the week, throughout the course of the week. Um, so the first one for Grace would be the G tonalization. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Then back down. One thing that we made a note on last week to work on was making sure that we're doing the moonwalks with this. It's super easy for the kids to um, to just repeat fingers here. Book one, you can get away with playing book one with one finger for the most part, um, but we want to work on that technique now rather than in book two when things get a lot harder. And there'll be a point um, in the book series where like you're just not going to make it unless you do the correct right hand fingering. It's like designed for that. Um, that's where the composer intended the piece to be played or the arranger intended the piece to be played. So it's always good for the, to develop that habit now rather than having to develop it later when you're a teenager and then these are like, why do I have to do this? It's far easier to do it now. Um, when they get bigger, their arguments get more complex and <laughs> their attitudes get more complex. Um, so anyway, um, other things to work on with the G tonalization are the big three. Um, making sure our wrist is nice and um, and, um, and spent just slightly. So you'll know you've got a good right hand wrist when you see if you're standing here and you just let your wrist kind of flop to the side, that natural bend in the wrist is kind of what we're looking for. And we're trying to emulate that with the, um, or, or to, to reinforce that I should say, with, um, with the hacky sack uh, underneath the wrist. Making sure that wrist is nice and straight as possible for right now. I know he, he kind of favors this a little bit. As we get older and more refined in our technique, our wrist will start doing this right here. Um, this is the old Spanish style, no one does that anymore. And, um, and this is the, the new modern way of playing. So making sure our wrist is has a hacky sack underneath with a nice slight, ever so slight bend in the wrist. Uh, making sure we have our thumb on the ceiling without poking over top. That's uh, something we're always working on with Grayson. Making sure that we get our thumb back like this. And uh, lastly, um, good heart to heart. We don't want to be out this way, right? Uh, we want to have it dead center of the chest right there where the heart is. All right, so work on that for me. And then number two, Rigadoon. Um, this Rigadoon is, in my opinion, the hardest of the, the book one pieces. This is, this is the big capstone of moment of the, of, the, of the book. There's a couple other little things that we're gonna do uh, in the end of the last few pieces. There's some very important teaching points in there. One carries through to book nine, really. Um, you can see how it's actually mapped out. It's actually quite elegant, beautiful, the way they designed it. Um, uh, and uh, the steps begin in, um, in the Bach tons. So we wanna make sure we're really following those right hand patterns. Um, anyway, so back to, back to Rigadoon, um, is that um, this one's the toughest one in terms of memory because it's so twisty and turny. It's not uncommon for a student to work on this for a couple months, for a few months, maybe. Even, I've even had one student, you know, we did other things, but like six months for this one. The trouble spot in this one for Grayson and for most other students is the C, the melody C in here, which is happens in the fifth system, uh, 17th measure. So system one, two, three, four, five. Yes, I did it right, good. And this right here, this line and the following line are the toughest in the piece right here in terms of memory. What we wanna do is uh, we wanna fragment this thing, right? So you can play two measures at a time. Grayson reads notes well enough that he could probably even read that right there. Maybe not the, the, the eighth notes, but he can find the pitches. Um, so we have the first part, which is A, B, C, C, B, A, G. So we want to isolate that so he gets that down. So A. called uh, 
10 times practice, where you'll practice a difficult passage 10 times in a row in order to earn that game. This would be a, definitely a spot, there's four of them here. There's measures uh, uh, 17 and 18, 19 and 20, uh, 21, 22, 23, 24. I would break them up like that. So there's four spots in here. And what I would like him to do is like rotate that, those out each day. So like every day he'll review the one he did the day before and then do 10 times on the next one. Like I said, he knows his notes well enough now that I think he can find those uh, without too much fuss on, uh, on the sheet music. He's actually quite good at reading music, um, but he'll tell you otherwise uh, because it's not, like every other kid, it's not the most favorite part of playing music. They always wanna play songs. They don't wanna read the notes, but anyway, so. Uh, it's a so box ring of the day. Um, so we have A, B, C, C, B, A, G. Then you have the second set of two, uh, two measures. A, B, C, B, A, uh, is it A, B, C, B, A, B, D. You can see how they can kind of confuse that. It's very, it starts off very similar and then ends differently. Antecedent and consequent. Um, so that's what's tricky about this is that like it's not the same thing repeated all the time. There's slight differences at the very end. Then you have 21, 22, A, B, C, C, B, A, G, B. And you see they add that little B on there at the end to get you to the next part of the melody. That trips up students. So make that a 10, um, a 10 spot practice. And then E, F sharp, G, we switch back into horizontal hand. I'll talk more about that in a second, All right? So we have this right here for the line 21 through 24 if I put them together. So we have A, B, C, C, B, A, G, B. They all want to put an extra D in there, right? But don't hit that fourth string open. The spot I'm talking about is measure 21, 22. Between 22 and 23, they all want to put an extra D in there. Don't do it. <laughs> it's not in the, in the sign of the music. And if you do that, we change that measure to six, four time rather than four, four time. And it will not be even. Um, so... There is no open D in there. So just one more time, just to play that part so you know what it sounds like, so you know what you're listening for. A, B, C, C, B, A, G, B, E, F sharp, G. So he should switch back into horizontal hand. As soon as he plays that B, E. That would actually be a spot I would practice right there, is maybe going from open B to a fret of E on the second fret of the fourth string. E, I say B, I always practice the spots right before where I made a mistake because that's where the accident lies. It doesn't happen the moment of collision here and i playing the wrong note, right? It happens the moment before usually causes the mistake. Right? You're not set up correctly or in the right spot. Or it's a memory issue. You have your memory's faulty there. So work on that for me right there. And then a horizontal hand, making sure that uh, we bring our hand up to horizontal position. We're gonna be in the D scale now. We're gonna be in second position, which means our first finger is gonna be over top of the second fret. If my first finger top is over top of the third fret, I'm in third position. I'm in fourth position, in fifth position, back to four, three, and two. We make sure we're horizontal hand, thumb high on the back of the neck. Make sure our, finger, our first finger is poised over top of the second fret and it'll kind of be like almost on its side here. So don't try to shoehorn this into being a, on the tip of the finger. We're gonna be almost on the side of the finger right here. We can talk about writing lessons. Making sure that we use the correct fingers. We, sometimes we have a habit of like going D, E, and then switching into the correct finger over here. So should we open D, E on the second fret with the first finger, fourth, uh, fourth fret, third finger, we have the F sharp, and then we have G, on the uh, on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Sometimes Grace has a habit of playing the open G there, but it's uh, for teaching purposes why we want to play it in this position. We want to get that pinky working right here. Yes, we can play it open, but then that would defeat the teaching point. And then that way when we come in, what would happen is we would come up to a difficult spot later on where the pinky has to do a lot of acrobatic stuff and we wouldn't have practiced it yet. So we just want to practice the technique, even though yes, that is the same note on the third string, right? So one more time, D. E, F sharp, G, A, B, right on the third string. Back down, B, A, G sharp, or sorry, G, uh, F sharp, E, and D, right? And those are all the notes that we need to set us up for Brother John. Right? There's one tricky part in Brother John, but that will actually be quite easy. The kids, the kids will know that melody. 
work on that for me. And then number four is just a short teaching point, which is just let's start listening to Brother John. Um, I think he listens a lot anyway, so I'm not really thinking I'm not too worried about that. But just make sure that one's getting heavy rotation um, into the, um, the, the listening. And then uh, number five is note reading. Uh, continue working on, let's see, Grayson's notes here. He last time was doing pages 11 and 12 in his note reading book. Stay in those pages, read it once, move on to the next one, read it. So what he'll do is he'll name the notes, he'll clap the rhythm, and then he'll play it. And don't go back and like redo sections of it. The idea is the Suzuki kids have a really good ear. They'll stop, they'll stop reading the music and they'll start using their ear to figure out the melody. But what we want to do is develop real strong reading skills. Read it once and then move on to the next one. That's why we're doing a set of like five or six melodies that way you can just swap those out. The idea too would be that if he's in uh, orchestra or ensemble or something like that, and someone throws sheet music in front of him, he's not gonna have a chance to listen to it first necessarily. He'll get a look at it, he'll get to sing it, he'll get to clap the rhythm, and then they're off playing. So the idea is that we want him to look at that music and just see it like he's reading a book. At the end of the day, you have to look at this like he's reading any other textbook that he's reading at, at school and he just can hear the music in his head eventually. That way, when he goes to orchestra, he'll be able to do score study and open up the score and follow along and tell you what the oboes are doing. Awesome. So uh, work on those five things for me. Like I said, if you have any questions or want me to look at anything, you're not bothering anybody asking me. And I'll see you guys uh, in person next time.